Howdy gang, it's Professor H with our first hands-on networking video and with this one I thought I would talk to you guys about wired network devices and what better place to start than at layer one with our hub. Now when I say layer one that means that the hubs don't make decisions based on addressing of any kind. They don't understand MAC addresses, they don't understand IP addresses, they make decisions on bits, ones and zeros, and that's it. I like to call the hub the toaster of the networking world. This one happens to be a rack mountable hub, so it looks a lot like some of the devices we're going to take a look at here in a second. Lots and lots of ports to connect end user devices here. But again, unless you have a managed hub, these guys don't make a whole lot of decisions at all. Alright, next up we have our layer 2 switch. Now this guy looks a lot like the hub that is sitting underneath there. It has lots and lots of ports. All of these happen to be RJ45 unshielded twisted pair ports. But the big difference between this guy and the one underneath is that this switch makes decisions at layer 2, which means it makes decisions based on MAC addresses. Now when you have a switch, you also have additional capability. Switches also do error checking for, in this case, Ethernet frames. We also do VLANs, spanning tree, and other fabulous layer two kinds of things. So that's what you get when you move to layer two. This guy happens to be a router. So now we're moving up to layer three. We can notice a couple of differences here on the router. We have a lot fewer ports on the router. Routers make decisions at layer three, which means that they're dealing with IP addresses, uh, but they don't handle things like VLANs or spanning tree. That also, uh, one of the other big differences between the switches and the routers is that you typically don't connect end user devices to the router. So that's why there aren't as many ports on here. With a router we get things like our routing protocols. Now today there is another wired networking device that we haven't got out here yet and that is sort of a combination between layer 3 device and a layer 2 device and that is a layer 3 switch. This one happens to be an extreme layer 3 switch and what that means is that we're combining some of the functionality at layer 2 with the functionality at layer 3. The basic problem is that a router makes decisions at layer 3. That means it has to process the IP header, the header checksum, look up its routing table, things of that sort. So routers generally speaking are much slower than switches. When we combine those functionalities we get a box that makes forwarding decisions almost as fast as a switch but understands the layer 3 topology. So there's a lot more going on. Most people, when they say multi-layer switch, what that means to them is routing between VLANs. And that's true, you do get that, but actually multi-layer switching means a lot more than just routing between VLANs. Now this guy here happens to be a Cisco version of the same thing. This is a Cisco 3550. So this also is a multi-layer switch, but the Cisco flavor. Vendors do things a little bit differently in terms of how they handle their multi-layer switching, but that's that. So the nice thing about a multi-layer switch, in addition to our improved forwarding, is that a multi-layer switch allows you to sometimes remove the routers from the topology. Well, I think that'll about do it for this first hands-on networking video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've never seen one of these boxes before, now you're ready to get out there and take a whack at it. Thanks very much for watching, and remember, it's networking. You can do this.